Hi, I'm Denise Applegate Schober, and I'm here to show you how to turn a quilt on a quilt frame. And we talked about this in our QBot webinar that sometimes we have to turn quilts and we all should know how to do it if that is something you think you might want to do in the future. This is a video for you. So I've loaded a small quilt and that would be my first suggestion is start with a small quilt. So this quilt you can see is um, quite small. It's actually 54 inches from this border to the other side of the border over here. I've loaded the quilt with the backing only attached to the frame. Pretty wild backing but lots of fun. I've loaded the batting and then I basted the three pieces together. So truly the only thing that's attached to my frame is the backing. The top layer will be held on with my quilt grips. So I'll actually take the quilt grips and attach the quilt to the frame. On this take up rail here I like to start in the center with my quilt grips. So I'm placing the quilt grips center all the way across and I'll do that so that it keeps the compensation down. It keeps the quilt from shifting more than normal. If I didn't have these on there, you'd see a lot more shifting with the quilt. So I've put the quilt grips on that side, and then I do the same thing on the other side of the quilt. Now I've loaded the quilt frame with the border piece, specifically, the border that goes from edge to edge. When I do a quilt that I have to turn, I like the border to be stitched all the way across, not the set in border. So this border is set inside of this one. So I'm going to do this full border all the way across. Then I'm going to do the center of the quilt, this area between the small border to small border all the way around. And then I'm going to do the lower half. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go quilt the top border, the center section, and then when I get that quilted, we'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. So as you can see, I'm getting towards the end of the quilt. There's a couple things that I want to make sure that I talk about when turning a quilt. I'm using the bungees as you see here and those become extremely important. Now when using the bungees be sure not to bungee your top of your quilt. You don't want to stretch it. You only want to bungee your batting and your backing whenever possible. The other thing is that verify this take up rail because the take up rail we want to make sure that this has enough space for the machine to move back and forth. And if there isn't enough space, what happens is it's going to shift all this fabric in here and make things move kind of awkwardly. Now, I'm finishing this wreath here. I'll roll and I'll finish this wreath. I will be doing the lower two borders, the small turquoise border and the bright green border before I turn the quilt. And I'm also going to make sure that I baste. So as I'm going, I'm basting along this side to keep everything smooth so that when I put the quilt back on the frame it will lay quite nicely. So I'm really close to getting this done and then we'll proceed with our uh, turning the quilt. So I'm nearing the end of the design and it's on the lower border. So right now it's completing the final border. I have the batting here and underneath is my backing and it's going to go off all the way to this edge. Notice that I have the basting stitch here and my bungees are attached. Now a couple tips while that's finishing up. Sometimes our bungees are attached and they might want to um, hit our machine and impede on what we're doing. So if you take a yardstick and you lay the yardstick underneath the bungee strap, that will lift up the bungee strap to keep the bungee from hitting your machine. So that's just a little tip that I like to show people 
about bungees and how to keep those from hitting the lower edge of the machine. So it's almost complete. It's been quilting most of the day. I did do uh, custom quilting on this where I quilted all of uh, the pickles and the circle in the center of the quilt with a feathered wreath and then I did see some uh, crosshatch and echo quilting out here of the wreath and now I'm finishing up the feather border. Once that border is complete I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread. So it's locked the stitch. I lift the foot, pull it away, bring the machine back to the same hole or about the same vicinity. That'll keep the tail short on the back side and not making a big loop with the tail. Now I can cut these and I leave a tail so that I can bury those threads when I'm done and now those are complete. Now I'm going to take the bungees off. So give me just a moment to remove both bungees. So I've removed both bungees. I had a couple pins down here at the bottom in case I needed those to hold the quilt in place as it quilted. I'm going to get the batting out of the way. I'm not going to trim any of that. Now I'm using the red snappers. So I'm going to pull those off and lay them aside. And then my top piece, I'm going to unlock that and unroll that. Pretty squeaky when I unroll it, but it's unrolled. Now I'm going to move this red snapper and the last red snapper. Now the quilt is ready to be turned. It doesn't matter which way I turn it, whether I turn it the right side first or the left side first. So I've turned my quilt and now I'm going to attach the red snappers, which then will attach the backing to the take up rail. and I'm going to do that all the way across the top of the quilt. I could square up the edge of this quilt and get rid of the excess, but I'm not going to do that today. But normally I would take it to my large cutting board and take off some of that excess so that it's, the bulk isn't there. So now I have attached the red snappers and my piece is attached to the leader. The next step I'm going to do is I have locked both rails and I'm now going to tighten this rail 
so that the red snapper is right at the edge. Then I'm going to turn the backing rail, the front rail here, until the quilt is tight on that rail. Now it won't be entirely tight until I add the uh, quilt grips. So now I'm going to take my little container here and add the quilt grips. Now I've added the quilt grips and when I tighten this, whether I'm tightening the take-up rail or the backing rail, you'll notice that everything is taunt on the frame. The uh, quilt is floating to the floor, so it's just laying over the rail, but it's taunt now with the quilt grips. Now I'm going to quilt that center border at the top center of this quilt. And then I'll do the same thing and turn the quilt around and do the other side. By doing this, I don't need to rotate the design. If the design happens to be a design that is directional, because I've rotated the quilt, there's no need to rotate the dot design. Had I did it sideways down the side of the quilt, I would need to rotate the design. But by turning my quilt, I can do that design in one nice long sweep and be able to quilt my borders, the top, and then spin the quilt again and turn it and do the lower border. So try turning a quilt. I'm sure you'll find it's not too bad. It is kind of scary at first, but once you do it, you'll do it again and again. Happy quilting, everybody.